Imagine if every time you got your hair cut, it took six hours, cost two to three hundred dollars, and gave your hairstylist arthritis at age 29. Each year, eight billion hours are spent braiding hair. It's not just a waste of time, but it represents billions of dollars of lost value for people, mainly black women, who get their hair braided. Here's what they don't tell you about the hair braiding industry. Stylists are developing arthritis before they turn 30, and nobody with the power to change it actually cared until two black inventors decided enough was enough. Two brilliant engineers of African descent just built a robot that does something experts said was physically impossible, and they had to build it 450 times before it finally worked. This is the story of how Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi created a machine that's about to flip a 5,000-year-old industry on its head, why Harvard just handed them $75,000 to make it happen, and what this means for 20 million Americans who've been waiting their entire lives for someone to solve this problem. Let me paint you a picture of what getting your hair braided actually looks like. You wake up Saturday morning, walk into a salon around 9 a.m. feeling excited about your new look. You sit down in that chair. And six hours later, you're still sitting there, your entire body is stiff, your phone battery died two movies ago, you've eaten lunch and dinner in that same spot, and when you finally stand up to look in the mirror, you're $250 poorer. But at least your braids look amazing. Now, imagine doing this every eight weeks for your entire life, and you'll start to understand why this matters so much. Yinka Ogunbi grew up in a family of Nigerian engineers. She's worn braids her whole life, and like millions of other black women, she accepted this as just the way things are. But one day, she decided to try braiding her own hair, which sounds simple enough until you realize it took her four complete days. Four days of sitting there with fingers cramping so bad she could barely move them, back aching from hunching over, hair getting tangled, frustration building with every mistake. And somewhere around hour 30 of this nightmare, most people would have given up and called a professional. But Ogonbi is a biomechanical engineer, so instead, she asked herself a different question. Why hasn't anyone fixed this yet? Think about that for a second. We live in a world where robots build cars, where AI can write entire essays, where technology has made almost everything in our lives faster and easier. But for some reason, when it comes to braiding hair, something that 20 million Americans do every two months, something that generates over $600 million globally, we're still doing it the exact same way people did it 5,000 years ago when the practice was invented in Africa. The reason nobody fixed it is actually pretty simple. Hair is one of the most difficult materials to work with in robotics. It's incredibly thin, it's flexible in ways that are hard to predict, it comes in different textures and thicknesses, it responds differently to moisture and tension, and you're not just manipulating it on a flat surface in a lab. You're working on a curved human head that moves while someone needs to stay comfortable for hours. Engineers have looked at this problem before and basically said it's too hard, it's too complex, it's too delicate, there are too many variables, it's just not worth the effort. But here's where this story gets interesting. Ogun B didn't accept that answer. She teamed up with David Afalabi at Harvard Business School, and together these two young black innovators of African descent decided they were going to solve a problem that had existed for literally thousands of years. What happened next was 18 months of pure obsession. While other Harvard students were at networking events or working on their consulting case studies, Ogunbi and Afalabi were locked in a lab building prototypes, testing them on real human hair, watching them fail in new and creative ways, learning from each failure, and building the next version. They built 450 different prototypes. Let me say that number again because it's easy to gloss over 450 separate attempts. 450 times they thought they had figured it out only to discover a new problem they hadn't considered. 450 times they had to take apart what they built and start from scratch. Most people quit after five failed attempts, maybe 10 if they're really stubborn. But these two kept going because they understood something that people outside the black community often miss. This wasn't just about building a cool robot or making money. This was about solving a problem that affects their mothers, their sisters, their friends, their community. This was personal. Ogan B said it herself. And most importantly, I've worn braids all my life. And during a lockdown, I tried braiding my own hair for the first time, and it took me four days. Creating a braid on a human's head with hair is one of the hardest things to work with. Designing a device that actually works has been really tough. But tough doesn't mean impossible and somewhere around prototype 400-something, they finally cracked it. The machine worked, not just in a controlled lab environment, not just on a mannequin head, but on real human hair with all its complexity and unpredictability. 
on Ogan B's own head. And it worked so well that it matched professional quality while operating five times faster than human hands. The Halo Braid robot looks like a regular standing hairdryer, the kind you see in every salon, cream and gold colored, familiar and non-threatening. But inside that familiar shell is some of the most advanced machine learning technology you've ever seen. AI algorithms that understand hair texture, that calculate tension in real time, that maintain perfect consistency, that learn and improve with every single braid they complete. Here's how it actually works in practice. You go to a salon, a professional stylist starts your braids the traditional way, they bring their artistry and expertise, they get each braid started exactly how you want it with their creative touch and professional eye. Then, instead of spending the next five hours finishing those braids by hand, you sit under the Halo braid machine and the robot takes over. Finishing the work in a fraction of the time while the stylist moves on to start another client or actually takes a break without feeling guilty about lost income. What used to take 6 hours now takes minutes. What used to cost up to $300 becomes way more affordable. What used to leave stylists with chronic hand pain that ends careers before age 35 now lets them serve triple the clients without destroying their bodies. This isn't a small improvement. This is a complete transformation of how the entire industry operates. And here's the beautiful part. The machine gets smarter every day. Every braid it completes teaches it something new about different hair textures, about optimal techniques, about how to handle edge cases. And because it's machine learning, that knowledge gets shared across every Halo braid device in the network. So when one machine learns something, they all learn it. The device has already completed thousands of real braids on real people over the past year. This isn't vaporware. This isn't a concept that looks good in a presentation. This is a real working product that's been tested in the real world and actually delivers results. When Ogan B and Afalabi showed up to Harvard's 2025 President's Innovation Challenge, they didn't just pitch an idea, they brought receipts. They had a fully functional machine. They had thousands of completed braids as proof. They had testimonials from stylists. They had a wait list of salons ready to buy. They had everything the judges needed to see that this was real. And the judges saw exactly what they were looking at. This wasn't another app trying to disrupt an industry. It doesn't understand. This was real engineering solving a real problem with real cultural understanding. This was black excellence in STEM creating solutions for black communities. Halo Braid won the $75,000 grand prize, beating out hundreds of other ventures from all 13 Harvard schools. But here's what makes this even more impressive. This was Ogan B's second time winning this competition. Back in 2023, she won an Ingenuity Award for this same concept when it was just an early real world. That $75,000 is already being put to work. They're opening a pilot salon in Boston where they'll test different braiding styles, work directly with stylists and clients to refine the experience, gather more data to improve the machine learning, and prove the business model before scaling up for wider manufacturing later this year. They opened a waitlist on their website at halobraid.com and the response has been absolutely overwhelming. Stylists are signing up in droves because they immediately understand what this means for their business, their income, their hands, their future, and Ogan B said finding interested salons hasn't been a challenge at all because the idea of braiding in half the time, let alone minutes, is genuinely groundbreaking for people who've been doing this the hard way their entire careers. Now here's why it matters that this invention was created by black people of African descent. And I need you to really understand this because it's not just about representation for representation's sake. It's about who gets to solve which problems and why that matters. The beauty industry is worth hundreds of billions of dollars globally, and a huge portion of that money comes from black consumers. But when you look at where research and development dollars go, it's overwhelmingly focused on products for straight hair, wavy hair, hair that fits European beauty standards, the kind of hair that's easy to work with and easy to market to the largest demographic. When it comes to black hair with its tight curls, its unique textures, its specific needs, its protective styles that are deeply rooted in African culture and history, the innovation has been minimal at best. We get a few products on the bottom shelf at the drugstore. We get stylists who've had to teach themselves through trial and error. We get told to just deal with it, because that's how black hair is, difficult and expensive and time-consuming. Black women have been accepting this reality for generations. We've been told to be grateful that someone will even do our hair, to not complain about the price or the time, to not expect the same level of convenience and innovation that everyone else gets, and for the most part we've accepted it because what choice did we have? But Ogan B and Afalabi looked at an industry that hadn't innovated in 5,000 years and said no, our community deserves better than this. 
They didn't wait for some corporation to maybe eventually get around to solving this problem. They didn't hope that someone would care enough to help. They used their Harvard education and their engineering skills to solve it themselves. This is what happens when black engineers get access to the same education, the same resources, the same platforms, the same opportunities as everyone else. We don't just participate in the innovation economy, we lead it, we transform it, we solve problems that other people didn't even realize needed solving. Ogumbi comes from a family of Nigerian engineers, and that cultural connection isn't just a fun fact, it's central to everything about this invention. She understands braiding not just as a hairstyle, but as a 5,000-year-old African tradition with deep cultural meaning, as something that's been passed down through generations, as art and heritage and connection all wrapped up in one practice. This isn't some Silicon Valley tech bro who watched a YouTube video about braiding and thought he could disrupt the industry. This is a black woman who has lived this experience her entire life, who knows the pain and the cost and the time commitment firsthand, who decided to use her biomechanical engineering degree from Harvard to solve a problem that directly affects her community. And David Afalabi brought his Harvard MBA expertise to help turn this engineering breakthrough into a real scalable business that can actually reach the millions of people who need it. Together, they represent something powerful, black excellence in STEM. African heritage meeting American innovation, cultural authenticity combined with cutting-edge technology, the kind of representation that shows young black kids that yes, you can be an engineer, yes, you can solve real problems, yes, you can build companies that change the world. Think about what this means on a practical level for the people who will actually use this technology. Stylists who used to take on four clients per week because that's all their hands could physically handle can now serve 12 clients. They can triple their income, build sustainable businesses, hire employees, expand their salons, save for retirement, send their kids to college, all without developing arthritis that ends their careers before they turn 40. Clients who used to have to block out an entire Saturday and budget $300 every eight weeks can now get in and out in a fraction of the time at a more affordable price point. That means more people can afford protective styling, people can get their hair done more often, the entire experience becomes less of a dreaded ordeal and more of an enjoyable self-care activity. And for the culture, this means something even bigger. Braiding isn't just a hairstyle, it's art, it's heritage, it's how we connect to our African roots, it's how mothers bond with daughters while teaching them about their history, it's how we express ourselves and protect our hair and celebrate our beauty. And now that cultural practice can continue and even expand without the massive burden that's been attached to it for thousands of years. The response from the black community has been overwhelmingly positive because people immediately get what this represents. This is about respect, respect for our time, respect for our money, respect for the stylists who dedicate their lives to this craft, respect for the 5,000-year-old African tradition that deserves the same level of technological advancement that every other beauty practice has received. And it's about representation in a way that actually matters. When young black kids see Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi winning $75,000 at Harvard, getting featured in major publications, building a real company that solves real problems, it fundamentally expands what they think is possible for themselves. You can't be what you can't see. And now there are black kids who can see themselves as robotics engineers, as inventors, as founders of companies that transform entire industries. Let me give you some context about what it takes for black entrepreneurs to succeed in America. Black founders receive less than 2% of all venture capital funding, despite making up 13% of the population. They have to work twice as hard to get half as far, they have to prove themselves over and over again in ways their white counterparts never do. They face biases that assume they're not as capable or as serious or as fundable simply because of the color of their skin. But Ogunbi and Afalabi didn't let any of that stop them. They used every resource available at Harvard. They competed in pitch competitions, they won awards, they built 450 prototypes, they tested relentlessly, they refined constantly, and they proved that when black innovators get even a fraction of the support and resources they deserve, we can accomplish absolutely incredible things. The fact that they're opening a pilot salon in Boston means this is happening right now, not in some distant future. This is technology that will be serving real clients in real salons within the next few months. And when the wider manufacturing rollout happens later this year, Halo braid machines could be operating in salons across the entire country by the end of 2025. This invention proves something that people in Silicon Valley don't always want to admit. 
Robotics and machine learning can handle tasks that everyone said were too complex, too delicate, too human to automate. You just need engineers who actually care about solving the problem, and who understand the cultural context well enough to know what success looks like. If you can teach a robot to braid hair with all its complexity and variability, what else becomes possible? What other physically demanding tasks in the beauty industry could be transformed? What other cultural practices could be honored and elevated through technology? What other problems that disproportionately affect black communities could be solved if we had more black engineers with the resources to tackle them? Ogombi and Afalabi aren't just building a product, they're opening a door. They're showing what's possible when black innovators combine cultural understanding with technical expertise, when African heritage meets American innovation, when the problems of our community become the focus of our engineering efforts instead of afterthoughts that maybe someone will get around to eventually. The waitlist at halobraid.com keeps growing every day. Stylists keep expressing interest. The beauty industry keeps paying attention because everyone with eyes can see what's coming. Halo Braid isn't just a cool invention that wins prizes at Harvard. It's the beginning of a genuine transformation. It's the first real crack in a 5,000-year-old status quo. It's proof that the future of beauty technology can be inclusive and culturally relevant and designed by and for the communities it serves. This is black innovation at its absolute finest. Identifying a real problem that affects real people, applying world-class engineering to actually solve it. Building something that genuinely works in the real world, bringing it to market in a way that empowers rather than replaces human expertise and artistry, all while honoring and elevating the cultural significance of the practice itself. Yinka Ogunbi and David Afalabi are pioneers proving that when we invest in black excellence, when we support black entrepreneurs, when we believe in black innovation and give it the resources it needs to succeed, we get solutions that change lives and transform industries and make the world better for millions of people. The next time someone tells you that certain problems can't be solved, that certain tasks are too complex for automation, that certain industries are just the way they are and always will be, remember Halo Braid. Remember that two young black innovators of African descent looked at 5,000 years of unchanged tradition and said, we can make this better. And then they built 450 prototypes until they actually...